Welcome back everyone, Tony here. Um, and today, I'm going to be doing a slightly unusual video for my channel. Today I'm going to be going into taking a look at some software. So, here's what I have for us today. So most people know the software OBS. You all know it can probably stream to YouTube, Facebook Live, whatever, and you can also record locally. Now, I was trying to do something the other day. I was trying to stream the screen from this computer right onto a second computer that I have connected to a TV wirelessly because I don't have a long enough cable or a splitter or anything. So I don't have Miracast or anything and that computer is definitely not fast enough to do any decoding. It's like a Pentium single core one gig RAM machine. Uh, so I realized but though it can actually play some streams. So what I've done up to, I had done up to now was I was just using VLC to stream the local screen to the other computer over HTTP and playing it back. Now there's a couple problems with that. The quality sucks. Uh, VLC will capture when you go to a screen, it'll capture both of the screens. So the bit rate's not enough and if I increase the bit rate the computer's not fast enough to decode it. But I found a solution to my problem. Um, so I was trying to see if I could get OBS to stream locally to another computer. Ends up this is actually possible. So using a UDP stream I can actually send what I want from this computer to the other computer. I know it's not a very conventional use case, but hear me out on this. This, can act, this actually has some practical applications. Say for example you're running a computer with, with not much internet, right? So you're on a limited internal network and you have a second computer that has like a multi gigabit connection. Well, it could actually stream your first computer to the second and the second one can act as a relay and send it to YouTube or somewhere. Or you could use this to wirelessly send like a camera input or any number of things to another device on the network. So what's interesting, for, first of all, is it doesn't use the streaming functionality of OBS, rather instead it uses the recording functionality and I'll go over why. So overview, we're going to do a UDP stream from OBS on this computer and we're going to play it back on another computer. To get started you want to hop on over to settings and you want to switch over to the output tab. So by default you have this assortment of a fun function. So you have streaming and recording and you don't have any options. You have NVENC and X264 and obviously this is not going to work for our purpose. So first of all what you want to do is you want to switch the simple output mode to advanced. Now you will see that this opens up quite a few more options. Now you have well, rate control and a bunch of stuff. You can switch between X264 and NVENC. But there's still but we still can't get this to stream to our computer. So what we want to do is we want to switch to the recording tab. And you'll see by default, again, this is very simplified. But you can actually switch this type from standard to custom output FFmpeg. And what this does, as you can see, is you get this huge functionality of features um, that you could use. So by default, I usually have this set like this. This is what I would use for video encoding, right, or uh, recording. I, I, I tend to use LibX264 because it's fast enough for my computer, unlike, well, many other codecs. So LibX264 and Vorbis for audio because I don't know, it's better than MP3. And uh, I just usually record in an MKV file just because they're practical. If the file breaks, I can still play from halfway and such. They don't need to be recorded the full length in the same way MP4 does. So this is great for recording locally, but we don't want to record locally. So what you can do is you can switch the FFmpeg output type over here to output to URL. Now this gives you, you now have uh, the URL option here. So this means that I can actually just go UDP colon slash slash and I can type in an IP address. So say I wanted to stream to 192.168.0.100, I would just do that here and I can get a port, so like something like 8081 or 8080, whatever you want. So that works great. Now for the purpose of this demonstration I'm going to stream this locally inside this computer and we'll see why. So I'm going to go 127.0.0.1. This is just a simple loopback. It just means it resolves back to your computer's IP. And I'm going to go colon 8081. 
you can use any port as long as it's opened by your firewall so traffic can actually go through and it's not used by another application so I can't I'm not gonna use port 80 or 22 because that's running SSH um, but 8081 is usually unused by most other services 8080 is often used by some local web server so and I can't stream just a regular Matroska container because it's not well the stream world format. So I can actually switch this over to MPEG TS because TS files, on the other hand, are streamable over the internet, and a bunch of video sites would actually use them. Um, so we want to open over to MPEG TS, which is an MPEG2 tra uh, transport stream. So what you want by default, the video encoder is MPEG to video, and the audio encoder is MP2. Don't use these. <laughs> Even though they're the defaults, and if you uncheck this, OBS won't give you any other option. If you actually say, say uh, show all codecs, and from this list, you can actually choose libx264, which is my recommendation here, because it's a very fast encoder. Unlike libvpx or libx265, uh, x264 can run above real time, so you can actually do the encoding while live. So I'm going to use that. You don't need to even provide any settings. And uh, for my audio encoder, well, you can use whatever you want. So I can even get away with using Vorbis or Flack or whatever, right? So uh, I'll use like uh, you can use Vorbis. You, you can pretty much get away with using a bunch of things. I can I can do an MP3 stream. There we go. Um, video bitrate. You want the basis based on what your standard is. So I usually have. Full HD 60 FPS because I think 60 FPS is more well, more worth it than like 4K. I don't even have a 4K monitor, so it would be useless. But something like you can go 4,500 bit, and I find that's usually enough. You can change that, play around with it based on uh, your configuration, and that's pretty much all for here. So you can just click OK, and I can hit Start Recording. Now you can suddenly see. Uh, the CPU usage uh, is uh, peaking, right? So it's at like 80 something percent because it's trying to uh, record the screen with X with X264 and do the stream. So here's how we're going to play this back. I'm going to open a console, All right? And I can just go something like MPV. You can use VLC as well, but again, VLC is recording the screen, so I'm going to use MPV, which is a new version of. Uh, player I can go no cache to make sure we get the lowest latency and I'm gonna go UDP colon slash slash at o dot o dot o dot o colon 8081 I'm gonna enter and you can already see it's receiving the H264 and here we go we actually have MPB up and running you can even full screen it and it's streaming with OBS so if I switch to like my PCI capture card you will see that within a second my MPB stream will switch if I switch this to just well OBS, you can see that well it follows along. I can switch to monitor one, monitor two, uh, whatever I want. I can even switch to my recording monitor for this video. So this is pretty functional for <laughs> um, yeah. That's so why you should maybe set your key keyframe uh, slower. But this is useful so I can stream this to another computer. So if I was using another computer closes for now instead of putting 127.0.0.1 like we did you will put the IP address of the computer you want to stream to that's where your computer is gonna send all the packets for this video stream right so I'll put like 192.168 or 10.0 what depends what your network set up for and in MPV you can pretty much almost always go 0.0.0.0 and just use the add at the start because that pretty much resolves to this computer and this computer is uh well this computer is or the computer that's receiving the signal is going to have the signals with it so you can just use that and you'll just provide the port that you're using the no cache uh, tag that I used here just limits the cache that MPV uses so that the stream is closer to real time hopefully you found that video useful uh, hopefully you learned something and maybe you'll even find a practical application for this. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found this useful, please like, maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And I will see you all next time. Peace.